This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and welcome to the seventh episode of the Naughty Bucket Chronicles. If you follow my channel, you are almost certainly familiar with Bosnian Bill, his excellent YouTube channel, and his infamous Naughty Bucket. That's where Bill keeps locks that have thus far resisted his picking efforts. Well, in my recent visit to Bill's Lock Lab, he graciously allowed me to select several locks from the Naughty Bucket for me to try at home. And this is one of those locks. It's a Tokos Euro Profile cylinder with the company's Tech 300 locking mechanism. This mechanism replaces standard pin tumblers with stacked wafers and then puts a ball bearing at the surface that interfaces with the key. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but I will certainly take this apart to show you what's inside toward the end of the video. Now, the Tokos catalog states that this system provides, quote, 100% protection against lock picking. I have no idea why they would say something like that, because there's nothing inherently difficult about picking the Tech 300 cylinder. However, this particular lock is a different story. It's pretty tricky because of the combination of a pretty nasty keyway and absolutely absurd bidding. So let's get this in the vise and both prove Toko's wrong and evict this lock from the naughty bucket. Okay, let's get some tension in here. I'm gonna use top of the keyway tension with one of the Peterson flat five. Okay, and we're gonna start off with a standard hook in 15 thousandths. Nothing on one, two, three, four. Little click out of five. Back to one, nothing there. Little click out of two. Nothing on three. Little click out of four. Nothing on five. One, two, three. Okay, we hit four and we just dropped into a false set. Five, one. Okay, click out of two. Nothing on three. Okay, on number four, I can actually feel the pick hitting number three and I cannot go any farther on pin four. So I'm gonna swap over to a deeper hook and see if we can go over to pin four. Okay, got a little click out of number four. Swap back to our regular pick. One, another click out of two. Nothing on three, can't touch four. Nothing on five, one. Okay, I think we might have to touch pin four again. Let's get that deeper hook. And come on, he's proving a little bit difficult to slide in there for some reason. There we go. Touched pin four and we open this up. Okay, let's take this apart so I can show you the Tech 300 system. Okay, to take this lock apart, we need to first remove these two pins which attach the cylinder to this spine. So let me get a small piece of wire and just tap them through. Okay, we got one out. Okay, we've got the two pins out. Okay, now this is actually a lock which disassembles in reverse from what you would normally expect. So I'm going to pull this cylinder out, place it right here in the pinning tray, 
and then try to get the wafers out, which is actually a little bit on the tricky side. But since they're made out of steel, I'm gonna to try to use a magnet to do that. Okay, this is number one. I'm going to place everything in the tray as it would be in the lock. Okay, number two, we didn't get a spring that time. You can see there's little notches in it which make it act a bit like a T-pin. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Number three. Four. and five. Let's see if we can get the rest of the springs out of there now. There we go. Okay, let me arrange these. Okay, now for the key pins. Again, a little bit tricky to get out, but a magnet helps quite a bit. Or I should call them key wafers. And I'm taking these out with the ball bearings that I referenced earlier. Okay, I think that gutting went pretty well. Let me turn this around so it's the same way it would be situated inside of the lock. Okay, these are not cooperating with me. I think because I used a magnet for gutting I may have magnetized these wafers just a little bit, and so they're all sticking together, but I think you'll probably be able to get the general idea. Okay, so here's what we have instead of pins. We have wafers, one stacked on top of the other. Nothing in the way of security pins with the exception of what you see in stacks two and four. You can see the upper wafer, or driver wafer, depending on how you situate it, has a little cutout on the corner, on each of the corners. That simulates the T-pin, and that's probably what gave us the false set. We also have those ball bearings underneath, and they are designed to reduce friction between the wafers and the key, and probably allows a very, very large max, maximum adjacent cut, and that's what I think probably allowed us to get that really nasty bidding, which might not otherwise be possible with most locks. In any case, that's all I have for you on this Tokos see, Tech 300 cylinder from the Naughty Bucket. Bill, one more time, thank you so much for giving me a shot at these locks. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.